Our trip has taken us here to Yangshan National Park, where we can see some geothermal vents and think about how these form and how they're tied to the beauty of Taiwan's landscape. Now, to understand how this happens, you have to keep the following in mind. Taiwan is a subduction zone, especially along its east coast. And what's happening here is you're seeing the effect of the ocean floor getting pushed down underneath of the island itself. And when that happens, it drags a lot of seafloor rock down there and creates a lot of friction and gets a lot of heat from the mantle of the earth, which results in a lot of heat welling up under the island. And what we see here is the result of that, these famous hot springs. Uh, and you might also notice that not a small amount of sulfur also comes along with the process and um, it's detectable to put it nicely. But these are excellent evidence of the subduction that's going on and they are tied intimately to the geology and all the structural features of the island of Taiwan. When groundwater comes into contact with the hot rock generated by the subduction process, it becomes steam and makes its way to the surface through fissures in the ground. Sulfur catches a ride along. Now, this sulfur has never been exposed to molecular oxygen, so it tends to reach the surface as hydrogen sulfide. But once it reaches the surface, it quickly begins to react with the molecular oxygen there and the moisture in the air to produce molecular sulfur on its way to becoming sulfur oxide gases and sulfates. Understanding the chemistry of these very interesting geologic formations begins with understanding that oxygen and sulfur are chemical cousins both from group six of the periodic table. Now because both of these elements come from group six of the periodic table, we expect them to have certain chemistries in common. Let's think about oxygen first. Here near the surface of the Earth, oxygen is commonly found in molecules like water, carbon dioxide, and of course molecular oxygen like the O2 we're breathing in the ozone from the upper atmosphere. Now when sulfur is instead the dominant element, as it can sometimes be in the subsurface of the Earth, we see things like dihydrogen sulfide, analogous to water, carbon disulfide, analogous to CO2, and elemental sulfur as well. Although sulfur tends to form the allotrope S8. Now you'll no doubt notice here that whenever we substitute sulfur for oxygen, we get a very similar chemical compound forming. They're essentially interchangeable when it's one or the other. But what happens at the surface of the Earth, where the oxidizing atmosphere comes into contact with those gases from the reducing subsurface. Well, in this situation, those reducing and oxidizing worlds collide, and oxygen and sulfur begin to compete with one another for the position in that H2S molecule. In the resulting chemical reaction, the sulfur is oxidized to molecular sulfur, and oxygen is reduced and becomes part of a water molecule. But oxygen isn't done with that molecular sulfur just yet. It can oxidize the sulfur even further to form sulfur oxide gases like this SO2. These sulfur oxide gases then escape into the atmosphere where they can react with additional oxygen or moisture to form a variety of sulfur containing compounds that perpetuate the sulfur cycle. These are just a few of the chemical reactions going on at this site that gives it its unique sights, smells, and environmental importance. Having seen the geothermal vents on the mountain, we decided then to take advantage of some of the trails that lead all over Yamingshan National Park. We saw some unusually large cow pies, which led us to believe that we might encounter some friends along the way. And rather than let that get me started babbling on about the nitrogen cycle, I thought maybe this time I'd just enjoy the walk. Sure enough, about halfway through our walk, we came upon some residents of the island that I hadn't met before. So what we got here is me, mama cow, baby cow, and a path. What could possibly go wrong? Fortunately, we quickly discovered that the hooved residents of Taiwan are every bit as friendly and welcoming as the ten-toed variety. And we enjoyed our walk past mama and baby without any incident at all. Even the big goofy American with a camera on a stick was given a pass. Bye, mama. 
Well, we just finished the loop. Looks like we got our, our exercise for the day. I had my close encounter with a beast of burden for the day. Survive that one. On to the next stop. <laughs>